America is very good at living in the myth of America. You can't train away bias. You can't train away bigotry. He knows that he can step on the line where freedom of speech is and that the Supreme Court will not slap his hand away. And those people didn't even, haven't given black people reparations. Right. That needs to be addressed. We are living in literal serfdom. This is like a new medieval happening. This impacts everybody in the United States. They cannot stand us to have anything. Once they have established this as a precedent, they are going up the chain. chain. It has nothing to do with the American people. It is all about power. What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations, 2020 Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers that's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And being part of that team in 2022 and 2021, reached out directly and indirectly to over 100,000 fathers around the world. By the way, I'm still a member of that team. I'm just giving you some history and some deets. So just want to make sure you know that. So we're broadcasting live on May 27th. I'm located here in Toronto. We have had some spectacular weather the last two, three days in Toronto, and we're not supposed to be getting any more rain for at least another week. But I have to mow my lawn, have to water the grass, got to make sure all those chores, but hey, it's A-OK. But if you don't know what's going on, Saturday evenings, most Saturday evenings, well, actually every Saturday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern time, most of the time live, and sometimes on replay, we do State of Things with Aisha, Jill, and Lala. So let's bring up Aisha K. And Jill D, I, Aisha K is back. Amen, Hello, amen. Oh, Aisha, happy Hi. to have you back. I mean, I didn't even get to chat with you before this, so you look good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I have a voice now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, what was going on with you, with your voice? I had COVID, then I had pneumonia, and um, lost my voice. I sounded like, uh, you know, if a cat and Mariah Carey and a hippo got into an argument. I would have loved to heard that, by the way. Places. That would have been interesting. <laughs> interesting. Okay. All right. Well, glad to have you back. And what's going yes. on in the world? Of, what's going on in the world of G, Jill D? Well, as I told you guys earlier, we just had a shooting out at Burbank Home Depot. So I'm really thankful a little bit about 45 minutes ago. So um, I'm so glad that I was supposed to be here tonight because I, and I'm glad I didn't go earlier because I was actually going to go, you know, it's uh, the weekend, a lot of like appliance things are on sale and I'm glad I was just lazy and, <laughs> around. but you know, it always aggravates me because this is how Republicans have now forced us to live. And it's actually a, a ethos. It's like a thought process that's just spread like a cancer across the globe where we have some very unstable people walking the planet beside us. Um, I don't even yell at people like I used to out of a car or when they're dry, although I did lose it the other day, but I do have to, I'm minding myself because people are, people are strange when you're a stranger. Um, yes, Ms. Morrison. Know, Mr. Jim, you know, Jim Morrison from The Doors, right? When you're a stranger, king. Um, so yeah, we're not strange are crazy at this point. Yeah, and actually, it isn't even strange. It's strange. Like, it, it's so <laughs> messed up. You got to put a strange. They're strange. They ain't strange. It went past strange to strange. He's strange. So, no, but other than that, it's a nice weekend. But I feel like the vibe of the, of, uh, the nation is down. I feel like a really weird heaviness. Do you, Aisha? Yeah, there's a whole lot of crazy going on, especially the last People two are weeks. Been just like, uh, it's it's heavy, it's ugly, and um, 
it is strange. It's it's making me not feel comfortable. Yeah. That's the only way I can just I can describe the feeling. Wow. Wow. Well, well, family is here. And one of the things I one of the many things I love hanging out with these outstanding ladies is that they're so strong, they're so intelligent, they don't hold back. And people say to me, Wow, they, they don't hold back and say, No, they don't hold back, and nor should you. They don't hold back. And also the consistent family we have in every week. So Jen Meyer says, hello, everyone. Hello. Black Beauty says, so glad to be here tonight. Needless to say, America's in a real mess. Yes, a real pickle. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Regina, glad to be back, was in the no. Netherlands, spent two weeks listening to Europeans be about Americans. However, the young Dutch men all seem to want to visit the U.S., well, really? that could be two, for two very different reasons. We know, mm -hmm. that, you know that there's a lot of racism that exists that is also flourishing there, too. Um, they just might want to come out here and try it on. Or there are some who just want to come and kick some, which you have that, too, because, uh, yeah, they, they're they interesting. interesting yeah. <laughs> but, like uh, yeah. Go ahead. You know. okay, no problem. So before we get into our conversation tonight, um, we communicate through back channels, all four of us during the week, and it's leading into something that we want you to be involved in if you so choose to. But Aisha, you said, yeah. you well, it's sort of related to what we're chatting about, about one of the subjects we're chatting about tonight, yeah. but you have had it with Twitter. Oh, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Why? Okay. When... The owner basically platforms a candidate for um, president who wants to go back to 1865 um, to 94 billion people. Um, yeah, that, it's a bridge too far for me. Okay. Sorry, okay. I, I don't want Ron DeSantis to do to... Um, the rest of us, what he's doing to Florida. And Elon Musk seems to think that's okay. Platforming it or not, endorsing it or not, if you platformed it on your own channel, that is an endorsement. I don't care what people say. Mm, well, we're going to get into that announcement in a little bit. Uh, and so Aisha's done with Twitter. So, yeah, so this find is me on Instagram or Discord. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to get into this. So Jill has to take care of something. So we will we'll be back in just a bit. I'm just doing reaching out to some people online. Hope that, you know what, I'll, I'll say that to later. Which leads into an announcement we have here. So what we have done is actually we have created, okay, Jill is back. No, Jill is not back. <laughs> No, I don't know what to do with you. Jill's just mourning around the place. So I'm going to wait till she sits proper down. So what we have done for you all, our family, we have created a state of things with Aisha, Jill, and Lala on Discord. So people don't know what Discord is. It's sort of like a Facebook group thing. It's similar to that. But since our, it seems that there's some interesting things going on on Twitter, we wanted to start a group chat, a community chat. So please, if you're interested in joining the group, email me. There's my email address there, and I'll, I'll send you a link, and you download it, and I accept you, and you're in the state of things with the Jill and Lala group. And that means that you can, we can continue the conversation after it finishes on Saturday night. Or you can provide suggestions of stories that you'd like us to talk about. Yeah. You know what, Dr. Vibe, it actually, if for most people, for a reference point, I just figured this out earlier today, it actually operates like Slack. Yes, so you use exactly. Slack at work, it has different yeah. channels, and yeah. it operates more or less like Slack. Yeah, so it's like a Slack, a public Slack. Yeah. Same sort of thing. So for us. For us, and it's just for us, for you and the family, but you got to email me first and tell me who you are, and I'm monitoring the room. So you make sure you're, that, well, you know what? You know the flavor, how it rolls on Saturday nights. So that's the way it goes. So I'm speaking that some of you will send me an email and say you want to join the group. And we're looking forward to the communication. 
because yep. when Aisha said goodbye Twitter, I said, okay. <laughs> yeah, this we is gotta... the only way aside from emailing me directly or texting me directly if you know how or WhatsApp uh, yeah. to get a hold of me because like I, the only reason I go on Twitter is to look for freelance writing um, things. I yeah. don't post nothing else. I don't search. I don't care what anyone has to say on there. Um, like I told the other woman on Twitter the other day about this thing. She's like, I said, you know what? When blackface is trending on Twitter, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and all you can and all you can say was, well, no one understood what he said. He's just he's just doing the announcement um, on a platform where blackface is trending. Okay, I'm done. Okay, Jill, you're back with us, but you need to unmute yourself. All righty. There we go. There we go. The cat got out. <laughs> Puss. <laughs> she went out the front door. Oh, <laughs> Didn't <gosh. laughs> see her, so. <laughs> you got to okay. be careful because cats can open doors on their own. I know. And this door is like, you know, was my husband had gone out. So I don't okay. know. I, it's a mystery. No problem. So let's get to some other things here. Regina says that, yes, yeah, saw anti-Muslim protests in Amsterdam. Mm. And also, and I know that Jill does a lot of following of stuff that's going on in Europe, especially. So she's probably not surprised about that. No. And I mean, it's just because there's the whole immigration fear, the same as it started here. Don't yeah. forget the old big head, um, uh, bug-eyed Bannon went over there and was planting his seed. But, you know, a lot of the Dutch that, you know, have heritage, people who are Dutch here think they're still Dutch. They think they're still German. They think they're still all those things and they haven't been that way for decades and generations in their family. Um, they align and they try to, there's a huge uh, national white supremacist uh, thing, movement going on. And it's global. People like Marie Le Pen and all those people. Yes. In yes. France. So, you know. The, well, the skinhead groups are very rampant in the Netherlands. Mm hmm Very much so. Ooh. Let's get into our conversation topics, and there's no lack of them. So first things first, it's getting close to June 1st. U.S. debt ceiling talks continue into you weekend amid breaking signs news. of. Pardon me? They came to a, a breaking news. They have an a, a what? agreement. What? Yeah, I just saw that before I logged on. Wow. We don't know what's in the agreement, but there's a tentative agreement. Okay, well, breaking news. We got it going on. So, so let's talk about what. What, I'm going to pull Jill off because it looks like the cat may have escaped again. <laughs> that, so, Isha, let's talk about the prelude to the breaking news. Your thoughts? Yeah. Um, well, I came on with the, with this this thought that I think that um, there there are these sticking points. First of all, all of this was done just to put something on Joe Biden's back as we lead up to this election. That's the first thing first, because if the economy crashes, they know that voters always blame the president that's in charge, whether or not it is his fault. We know that we're in this predicament because of Trump's tax cuts, because of Trump's spending. And people need to understand that whatever a, a particular president does or signs into law does not necessarily take hold when they are president. So for example, all the things that Trump talks about, oh, I got this done and this happened under my watch. No, they didn't. He never signed those pieces of legislation into law. That was Barack Obama. And it was signed to go into law in years in the future. Now, Trump's tax cuts in, from 2017 is why we are here with the spending and the debt that we have. And so I came here thinking that, you know, I didn't think that they were going to get to a deal. And they, they have a tentative one now. But this sticking point on Republicans about feeding people, what the hell is wrong with you? These requirements of, we want a work requirement. Do you know that there already is a semi-work requirement and that more than half of the people who receive food assistance Qualified. work? You know who that other half is that don't work? Children. Right. Children. 71% of the people 
who are recipients of um, food assistance our little kids. are it, families with children. Now, let me tell you something. If I, as a parent, when I had a small child, did not feed my child, withheld food, you would call Child Protective Services on me. You would arrest me. When the federal government and the politicians talk about withholding food from children and not feeding them, then they need to be held accountable. They need to be voted out. You need to call protective services on them because they are a detriment to our society, but they are also harming children and they need to go to jail. I'm sorry, Kevin McCarthy and all your little Republican minions. If you think that paying for kids to eat is a bridge too far, then you need to go to jail. Just keep in mind too, these same kids are also kids that are ben that benefit from the school lunch programs because for a lot of them, they only get breakfast or lunch in school. And guess what they did last year? They, well, not that last year, the beginning of this year, January, they, cut that program. They let it expire. So there is even less funding. And now they want to take away food that they can get at home. But they also don't want you to not have these kids. But, you know, the Republican Party, I've decided to name them the original Miss Agatha Hannigan. They are Miss Hannigan from Annie. They are the mean. They are Cinderella's stepmother. They're all of that. They are every bad villain you can think of in Disney. It's ironic that they're going after Disney because they're the villain in, in every single um, Disney movie or show just automatically go, oh, there's Cruella a Republican. Deville. There's a Republican. Ru Cruella was definitely a Republican. You know, she was definitely a, you know, yeah, for sure. Every single one, you know, of uh, their tenets of belief systems uh, are not about altruism and love and these people don't love anything. So when, when you say they love money, that's what they love. That's it. And, and they guns. also love power. They love power, guns and money. That's it. And um, you know, hopefully they'll choke on them. But um, the reality is that we're looking at a situation where, and they're very, very insecure people. The women are incredibly insecure. Republican women, insecure that this, they've got her what what Casey DeSantis has her husband begging for somebody to put her robot on the cover of a magazine I mean this woman looks is like she just came out of that movie um the darling movie with Harry Styles or uh Stepford Wives and all of that these are she's a robot also she's old-fashioned ain't nobody checking for somebody wearing long evening gown gloves like Barbie. I mean, in fact, I think that maybe DeSantis would be happier if we do a mystery date game for DeSantis. <laughs> He's so funny. I'll hold off on oh, DeSantis. We're going to get, we're gonna oh, get to him. Every day. But you know, here's the we're thing. We're going to get to DeSantis. But Jill, just want to interrupt. Sorry, you should. So Jill, you hear that they've reached an agreement in principle. You did a see that too? Okay. All right. I did, I'm with Aisha. I didn't really believe they were going to come to that conclusion. No, I thought they wanted to blow it up. I'm still, they're still till June. But anything could happen. Things and can they happen. haven't voted and on it, it yet. They haven't it voted will. on it yet. So keep in mind that we've got Marjorie Two Toes, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's going to have a problem in one of her. And then there's Mike Lee, who said that if he doesn't agree with any of it, he's going to vote against it no matter what. So, like I said, the heat was on this week. I don't think yes. they like the depiction of themselves online because their people have been coming hard, and there's no other way that it doesn't sink into just constituents like going, "Yo, are my SS Social Security disability checks going to be cut?" Yes, they're ready. They're slated. Jennifer Yellen or or Miss Yellen has Janet already, Yellen. Janet, Janet Yellen. but they're all ready. Uh, slated to go first. So once that started to register, like, oh, wait, hang on. my Because, you know, most of those Republicans, um, mm -hmm. I'm not counting the vets, but most most people who get approved for the disability, you know, you know, let's not I don't want to point too many fingers, but we could all pretty much say we know who they are. And, and the veterans that vet benefits would go next, would go second. It'd yep. be Social Security Veterans Benefits SNAP. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you have a problem with a kid holding an apple, but not a kid holding an AR-15, then something is wrong with you. Well, they, they, don't, they don't care about that, Aisha. No, 
No, they don't. They but here's, got rid of Amanda Gorman's poem, and they don't well, care. And we're going to talk about that. Yeah, too. I know. But here's the, here's going to be the interesting thing. Kevin McCarthy is in a very precarious position because he's showing up his because if 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 this bill and it sounds like it might be one that will require the approval of Democrats, of more Democrats need to vote for it. And he can get by without that hardcore Republican right um, vote. He's going to owe them, right? Okay? And if he has to owe them, Mark, remember that provision they put in his um, his uh, speakership Mark, that they can Mark vote Lee, him out, right? Mike Lee, they will put that resolution forward to get him. So he's very unique position, and I want to see how this all pans out. Yeah, uh, that's why I'm because saying they I'm they put Jim Jordan or Marjorie Tutos in. You think this is bad under Kevin McCarthy and Jill, you said it was strange. It will be some strange times. Absolutely. And I think they should have had everybody sign today with some blood and XX get that done today because anything can happen. You know, they mm -hmm. will brew. Uh, Let's tap those phones and see what's going on over the weekend because Republicans are going to be stirring the pot. And by Monday or Tuesday, it'll be an entirely different story of what yeah. they want because they'll have conferred with Donald Trump and whatever they want or just whoever, you know, they're thinking of. But basically, because, you know, really, MTG, she wants to be president, y'all. Marjorie Taylor Greene is going for the gusto. She is going. No, she can't and, win. She, you know, people in hell want ice water. She knows, but she can't win. Also, but what you but, but, but she what you want and what you can get are two different money things. For, she's laundering money. She bought a thing, a lipstick the other day of Kevin McCarthy's uh, chapstick for a hundred thousand dollars. Some say it was for laundering money. I thought it might have been like her just basically all over him like a cat like a animal sprays on something as marks its territory to be like hang on and what an insult to his wife if they did have an affair because it's pretty much out in the open she's like a no dog. but you're, you're right about the laundering money jill yeah you're right about the okay, laundering money wanna, part because those just want to take a break are, and catch up catch up with some comments so uh regina says i thought most of the new debt was due to the pandemic bailouts etc no. she also says that Having Newt Gingrich and oh, Anita right. Bryant flashbacks lately, anti-child, anti-gay, blah, 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 scoundrels. Yeah. When I was a kid, I used to think Anita Bryant flew on a broom. I got her mixed <laughs> up with the woman from The Wizard of Oz. I mean, so, I'm, so Regina, uh, Jill, you have a new title. Jill is the queen of shade, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> what, Jill? Really? What did I do? And then... All hail Ashley. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you guys see me? Like, uh, uh, on camera, I go, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, and I, I agree with both of you, just okay. from my lens. Kevin McCar McCarthy, yeah. he's on a plank, like on those like old yeah. pirate movies. He's mm -hmm. walking the plank. And that, which, which leads to a question How long do you think he's going to last as leader? I don't know. They're going to put him in the Tower of London. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. They just don't care. <laughs> What's no, the equivalent I, I think of the Tower of London? Or the Tower of Babel? No, like the Tower of London was London. where they used to, they put Anne Boleyn and every traitor to the <laughs> crown up there. Everybody, uh, William Wallace, uh, Wallace went, um, everybody had to I, go there. And then they take their heads and put it on the on a pike, like right in front <laughs> where the things were. This is one of the scariest buildings in London to me, right? So it's, it's, I don't know what's it's, the... It's, it's I interesting. I wouldn't sleep too well if I were Kevin this weekend. I see It's June. interesting, Jill, you, meant, you mentioned Janet Yellen. I think things accelerated when she was saying June 1st was going to be the day. Mm -hmm. That's when things started to accelerate. So I know, Jill, you don't... You may have some questionable thoughts about Janet Yellen, but I think her comments a few weeks ago started to accelerate this process. Well, she broke down what the process was, which is it's not going to just fold up, packed up and be done. It's going to it's going to it's sort of like turning off a life support machine. The this is going to go out first and then this. So once once she started showing um, how that structure in increments 
of not paid, who won't get paid, boom, boom, boom. That That's kind of like got it going. Cause it's, it was like taking, once you pull the plug, life support, this is, everything doesn't just go, boom. everything takes a minute to shut down. It's sort of like even a prisoner when they do the executions, it goes in chambers and that's how this was going to go. And maybe some of them, the stock market just didn't feel that they could survive a phase of like two weeks of that, which they wouldn't. That's where the rich people would really lose. They'd get really on that because it's not like instant. And then we can find something to bounce it back up in the next couple of days. This was like, no, no, baby, this is going to go down, 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 down. And they're, People won't be spending money and boom, boom, boom. And as it is, people already started going to the banks. You know, my bank had a thing where you had to make an appointment um, to take yeah, your money. Out. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, yeah. That because I called just to see, um, and that was maybe not so cool on that sector. Because Jamie Dimon, if you know, somehow his name starts getting stirring up in the middle of the, and when it does with banks and all that, then you know Jamie because they always got to confer because he's going to get paid one way or the other. He comes in with his little know, know it all self to tell, yo, this ain't going to be cool. Okay. Well, you know, I just want to, clear, I just want to clear up one thing that Regina said. No, it's not the, it's not the, the pandemic funding. 25% of that. First of all, these are bills and things, money we've already spent. 25% of that was what was um, spent by Trump. And the majority of yes, that was, was for the tax it. cut. And remember, the way our budget is, more than more than a, a, like a quarter of it, more than a third of it, is salaries, federal salaries. Okay, mm -hmm. well, we're still so, paying so, off Jared so, and Ivanka. <laughs> right, right. No, really, but, but we're still I'm paying about off in this. this. Yeah, but our Congress people, their federal salaries from last year that had mm -hmm. been paid. That is what's in this too. So if you take that uh, that thirty so percent of that plus the Trump spending, that's more than half of what this spending is. The pre-pandemic, the pandemic, post-pandemic spending was like that much of the federal budget that we spent. Also, too, was the military spending on um, tanks and weapons, and we aren't even at war. Okay, so well, and that is all what that I heard is blows that up our budget. But the Pentagon found, see, this is why uh, when you brought up Janet Yellen, Dr. Vibe, this is, these are, I'm going to name another thing that happened recently. So you know that um, a few weeks ago, the Pentagon suddenly found this uh, onslaught of money that <laughs> they went, oh, we calculated this wrong, which was going to Ukraine. Hey, we overestimated because we didn't calculate the age of the equipment that we were sending. So all this other... So to a regular person like me walking down the street, I'm like, oh, f you people, you understand, like, these are Ivy League trained people, if I'm not mistaken, right? Most of these have gone to an Ivy League school. And now all of a sudden, you can't pro don't understand proration. You don't understand depreciation. Uh, and yet, but there's a reason that came out, though. There was an expose on 60 Minutes last week that accused this is why that came out because they found money because they were being accused last week by whistleblowers of blowing money on a whole bunch of money on this one particular company that has a monopoly on one part one mechanical part that right. no one else makes and the part costs them something like 380 dollars to make and they charge the government more than like eighty thousand dollars per part for each one for all of you know our weaponry and and you're talking like machines and things that we use to the tune of it's something like 280 million dollars a year that they get so when that expose came out on 60 minutes the next day they're talking about oh we found a whole bunch of money yeah but this this wasn't just about that though it was about the fact that they settled that or squared it off by reconciling, re doing a new reconciliation of that mm -hmm. money by saying, oh, we did X, Y, and Z with the money. And the truth is about those $380 uh, parts and things like that and who gets the RFP and the um, all of those RFIs that go out, yeah. that's corrupt as well. 
America has to under, we have to accept this fact that every single area of our country appears to be corrupt. And mm-hmm. now that our judicial system, now that we know that SCOTUS is corrupt, mm-hmm. we're f- because yeah. that's a banana republic. That's like no different than Iran. It's no different than the Taliban. It's really no different than ISIS. To be yeah. honest, what's going on in a really weird way, because the control is how do you penetrate it to clean it up? It's like you're mopping a floor and the sewage is just falling from the sky from the whole building. And you're in a it, okay. that's what this is. Yeah. Let me just let me just interrupt here. So Black Beauty says here one hour ago. Uh, CABC News says they're close into an agreement. They have an agreement. in. They have. Ted Lou confirmed it. Yes. He's on the finance committee and yeah. he was on MSNBC about 850. And he confirmed yeah. that they have a they have a deal, tentative deal. They don't know okay. what the contents are. And the Republicans are getting their briefing from Kevin McCarthy uh, probably about now. Okay. Regina says, thanks for the clarification, Aisha. Love the blue eyeshadow, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's pretty. There we go. Uh, so just uh, just an update, too. Uh, just uh, let me take a little break. Uh, please lock, like the Dr. Vibe show on YouTube and hit the notification button. And may, I have to say thank you. Unfortunately, I... Aisha was not part of last week's conversation, but a lot of people checked out Lala and Jill last week. I watched the numbers, so very nice. Also, like the Dr. Vibe show on Facebook and LinkedIn. And again, would you like to join the Discord group of State of Things with Aisha, Jill, and Lala so you can chat with them in between shows and not hopefully worry about being banned from Twitter or banned from like Jill. Which Aisha will not be on. (laughs) And Aisha won't be on that. So again, if you want to chat with us offline, send me an email, dr period, V-I-B-E at the dr V-I-B-E S-H-O-W. And you can chat with us in between things. So do we have anything else you want to say on debt crisis? Hold on to your seat, Kevin. (laughs) <laughs> I think it'll be very interesting to see what the conversation we're going to have next week, but also during the week, if you join our group, we'll be talking about this during the week and posting different stories. So uh, I'm, I'm speaking that some of you will do that. We'd love to have you in the room. So let's move to another story. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump on Instagram live because uh, this was quite an interesting week. Welcome people who are watching on Instagram live or on replay. This is State of Things with Aisha, Jill, and Lala. We have Aisha K. Staggers and Jill Jones. Lala's not with us tonight. And we're going to be talking about a very interesting week. Tim Scott and Ron DeSantis enter the 2024 presidential race. Who wants to talk about either one first? I will. I got a whole lot to say. I know. I'm waiting for you. I've been been quiet for a month. (laughs) (laughs) Go for it. Okay. First of all, did you know he played You Dropped a Bomb on Me as his background music? I know. (laughs) When he came out. He did what? Yes. Yes. And then he um, made, he did this awkward yell that sounded kind of like a mule. Like, like uh, when Peter Brady's voice changed. Hi, y'all. Um, <laughs> that's true. It he was did. so it embarrassing. Was very it was so embarrassing. And then I'm proud to be an American. He was shucking and jiving so hard. I thought the bottoms of his shoes were going to wear out from dancing because Tim, Tim, Tim. He's not man enough for me. I think yeah, that you're still black. They still see you as black. I, mean, and- I, I feel them breathing down his neck. I feel, you know, I'm all for anybody African American who thinks they can seize this platform and do it. But um, I feel that because of their hatefulness towards President Obama, there is no way they're going to let another one squeak in. And if they do, it's going to be like having somebody over your shoulder. Remember how people would try to teach you how to write cursive? 
Um, mm -hmm. and that's what I feel. I always feel like there's a big white shadow over Tim Scott. And that there's just like a shadow of another thing that controls him because he never seems like his own person. And then they say things like, he's really good with our kids. You know, Tim is such a nice guy. We like Tim. I mean, he just comes over here and he makes and keeps the kids just laughing and laughing and laughing. And it's just kind of like- Because they're laughing at little Sambo. Yeah, I don't want, you know, Mr., you know, a President uh, Piggly Wiggly. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> I'm just not down for this. And I don't, and I think he's awkward. And then there's something that kind of bothers me that I'm not sure what his relationship status is with women or men or whoever it may be. I'm sure it will have to be women, but even one, pick one. You know, like we, I... I feel like, you know, he's a Virgo, so he's got some freak to him, everybody, you know, but, um, and that worries me, you know, uh, no, I'm sorry. I just, I don't want to slag him too much as his step and fetch and stuff as much as I just want to say he's playing a very interesting game and I don't think he's stupid, but what bothers me is that he knows we know he's playing this interesting game. And that's why I think he's there's something disturbing about that with him. He can't be, you know, he's not he's not real, but he's got some real somewhere, and somebody knows what it is. No, I, I mean, honestly, honestly, he was running for um, he was in what South Carolina politics when I lived there. Tim Scott, Tim Scott is he is literally who he is pretending to be. Okay, the, as okay. far as as, as as far as relationship status, he's married to Sarah Jane, and um, is he married? I thought he was single. No, he was married. He was married. Oh. He might not be anymore, but he was married, oh. and he um, you know, it, it, it's he was raised by a single mother, all of this and all of that. Um, the thing that for me with the Tim Scott announcement is that media needs to get a grip. They're like, oh, he's got such an interesting story. No, what you're seeing is that he's a black person who relates to white people. Let's be very clear because all black people have interesting stories because all of our stories, particularly if you're in this country, originated the same way. And like yeah. Jill said weeks ago, we are still here as people. I mean, all the stories are interesting. You know who you said had an interesting story to media that you're acting like you didn't or or you're surprised. You said that about right. Barack Hussein Obama. He's got such an interesting story. Now that is an interesting story. Okay. Well, Tim, Tim Scott doesn't have an interesting story. Tim Scott went to a uh, school in North Charleston. Um, he had predominantly white friends. That's not an interesting story. That's just the story you find interesting, particularly white America, because it makes you feel like he's one of the ones you can trust. He, he's okay. But I promise you, I promise you, I've heard it. Just like when Nikki Haley walks out the room and they start talking about her behind her back and the racism flows, the same thing happens with Tim Scott. I promise you. So Tim is everything that he pretends to be, which I got that line from Living Single because I happened to see that episode today. Um, but <laughs> he is everything that he pretends to be. And he is, he is positioned. The dangerous thing about him is that he has money in his coffers for this race. But he also has, he he's like a Candace Owens, but softer for white people. He gives, he, he reminds me of uh, like the, 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 um, the, uh, the slave on the plantation, a stereotypical one that when the master is sick says, we sick boss, knowing he's <laughs> yeah. well. And so that he, he's, He's a comforter to them. He's he he puts them in that mindset that um that 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 okay this is my this is my basically yeah. and this, this is, is the one this is the one I can get that's a book that won't get banned um, right <laughs> no, well no no if Tim Scott puts this is the book that Tim all Scott wrote, I'm your yeah. it, if he if he did they wouldn't ban it but not your by James Baldwin they did ban so. No, but Ron DeSantis wants to write a book that says, this is my, that's what. Oh, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't ban yeah. that. They wouldn't ban right. that. Um, and Tim <laughs> Scott wouldn't have a problem with him using the word. Um, we can, white people, I don't advise that you do. Um, but the, the, the whole, 
this whole picture, and, and I hope it's the Daz Band, right? That you dropped the bomb on me. I pl please pull your song. It's the Gap Band, isn't it? Yeah. Gap Band, Daz Band. They all to yeah. me, they all sound alike. They all had that same aura of eight early eighties, you know, funk. But just please pull your song. Please pull your song. <laughs> I do not let, know you can. Do not let um, this Amos and Andy Coon to take your song. <laughs> they can, um, to, you know, it's really hard. And they the can. People do it. They might not be able to because they don't have. They could they never stop Donald ownership. Trump. They could never stop him. Oh, the, the Prince of State did do a cease and desist, and he did he did stop. He did, but not after he played it so many times. And the same with yeah. Bruce Springsteen. It's just then it, the onus is. This is why it's such a shame. It's like people cost other people so much money. Then he has to call his Charlie lawyers, Wilson, and everybody get gets paid easy to pay that day, thousand dollars or two thousand an hour. It's just crazy how people mm -hmm. cost other people money, but All that's. Right. That's how we know. This is one thing I was wanted to say about how we know how corrupt our country is, is based upon how um, people paper the legal system to death with money, 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 money. And that's why people like Trump and people like other really billionaire criminals never get tried here because or around the world ever when a court system is ruled and controlled and layered with money, money, money and appeals, because that's for the very reason why Trump will never go to jail by the time his appeals roll around and money, money, money. That's how we know it's corrupt. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let's jump and, in and here. This, and, and let oh, me be clear though. This, this particular primary is, is going to be as corrupt on the Republican side because it's going to be about the dollars. And right now Tim Scott has 20 million and he's trying to use that to buy, to buy himself a VP space. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So before you go on any further, a friend we haven't heard from a while says hello, Christy White. Hi, Christy. She says hello. Hello. And she says, hi, girls. Hope you're doing okay. And yes. Christy was watching on Instagram and then she jumped over to Facebook. So that's what we want. This is what we like. So and also on, on uh, Instagram, hello, the Emily Goddess and also Dr. LJ Speaks, who is almost with on every time I jump on Instagram, you need to you need to come onto the uh, YouTube channel, but hey, if you like it here, here's your place. So we're with uh, Aisha K. Staggers, Jill Jones, State of Things. We've got to have Aisha. Christy back on. She's been doing a lot of good things. Yes, yes, with Christy, absolutely. Different and, um, laws and things that have been going on in her area. Yes, Important. we'd love to have her back on. So Christy, you know how to get a hold of me. We'd love to have you back on. Uh, on Instagram, S string thumbum I S T R G H T R U M. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it because I'll butcher it. S T R G H T R U M. Oh, I don't, don't know. know what I don't know what that is, but thanks for jumping on on Instagram. Hey, DJ LJ Speaks, you can hang out here for a while, but catch the main conversation on the Dr. Vibe show on YouTube. Catch it live or on the replay. So and Christy says, oh, straight rum. <laughs> that's what they call themselves, yeah. straight rum. So that's what it's called. Thank you for the clarification. You're watching. Here's, the data thing. Okay, no problem. And, I, and Christy says that she will reach out to me to come back on. So continue to – Tim Scott, we certainly have to get to Ron DeSantis' announcement, but continue on. No, I was actually going to say, and here's the thing about, about, about Ron DeSantis – and and his announcement coming after Tim Scott. Tim Scott's visually was disgusting. It was it was it was the show that white people wanted from a black candidate that they could get behind, um, on on the far right, a far right candidate. But Ron DeSantis is. Um, was a failure for a whole different reason, and, and it's what it's the reason why I got off Twitter. But also, um, you know, people make fun about the audio things. I wrote an article for Medium. I shared it on my Instagram. It was a very short article. It failed because the people Elon Musk fired the people who knew what they were doing. <laughs> Period. Right. That's that's it. There's no there's no need for think pieces of no no. Elon Musk fired. All of the people who knew what they were doing, who knew better than him, because he thinks he knows everything because he has money, and it went 
it went like crap. And guess what? I'm glad. I'm glad it's what they deserved. I think it failed because God didn't want it to. God don't like ugly. Well, that's what I also wrote in the article. God don't like ugly and ugly squared. <laughs> yes, you did say that. I think that the reality is that, you know, bad people make bad choices and ultimately uh, do bad things. The, the problem with these guys is that they're um, bootlickers. Like they've been, um, they, they don't know the fundamentals of anything else. They're licking other people's boots in the tears of their billionaire dumb. And, and Ron DeSantis is just uh, a squirrel trying to get a nut and uh, trying to do his thing. So he can be one like the others. He, he, all he has is, is to be strong wielding this power and, you know, word is that Disney is going to leave Florida. That's some rumors that I've heard that they are like, you know, they cut, they stopped their whole billion dollar new plan to build whatever they were about to do. And that was a lot of jobs that were coming in. So you guys know how I feel about the state of Florida. I know there are many people out there in the trenches, but they got to, they better, you know, you know, get the Cuban Nazis to stop voting for commun for, you know, it's like, it's so weird that the, the, the people are starting to be so strange from Cuba and who they're voting for and what they think communism is that I'm thinking their whole trip coming over here was a bunch of now, like, did you all really know what communism was <laughs> like? So why are you voting for it? It's like, I don't get it. So, I feel played. You guys know how I feel about being a liberal and a Democrat. And all my life, I've tried to like support policies that would allow people their freedoms to come here. And, and we, we fought like for all of it. And then these get here and make a little bit of money and go to the dark side. I'm kind of tired of getting played like that. That's like that roll over on me once. Okay, but you know, two and three and four times, it's like, it's not cool. So I feel the people in Florida because the only reason people pretty much live in Florida are a couple reasons. They don't have any money. It's pretty easy, cheap to live in Florida. Um, let's see, the other one is they have they're money, old. but they're, they have money, they're old, but they have money and they're hiding property because that's one state that if, you're sue, if you sue them or anything, you can't take their... Look at O.J. Simpson. So already the foundation of Florida is a little bit like wonky. It was one of the biggest drug places. I mean, talk about folks forgetting their history with drugs. I mean, the 80s, it was like that's how Miami Vice became a show based upon mm -hmm. what allowing to come in and out. So I don't know who they think they are now and what they're talking about. So on DeSantis. He's got bad taste. So does his wife with her cheap looking gloves and, you know, and her husband. Uh, and she needs to stop lending her husband her boots. Um, but, hey, <laughs> interesting. and I hear that these uh, these uh, partying and orgy taking families, swinger couples are really in in white America. Look at Marjorie Taylor Greene. Look at Bobert. They've all been swingers. I mean, Bobert is like a trained escort. Right. So, you know. I don't think much about any of these elections because I do know that Donald Trump is going to clean the floor with all of them. Does it matter? Yeah. And, and, you know, DeSantis isn't doing himself any favors by every time Trump says he's going to do something, DeSantis waits two days later and says he's going to do the same thing. The bottom line is this, he's oh, not a likable person. He's not a likable person. And this is really a campaign. I'm trying to get him to be likable. And here's the thing, you nailed it right there in the sense of like, every time DeSantis says stuff about Trump, he doesn't even have the cojones to go for it. He's too scared because he doesn't want to lose his voters. Like he has to, he sneaks up behind Trump like a, and Knox is like, tries to kick a, his knees in. That's what he does. And so even in a fighting match, nobody has no time for a like that. It's like, really? You're dirty. At least come correct. Be like up front. He tries to, uh, let me try to make sure when I insult Trump that I insult his age. I insult all this other like stuff, which is like, oh, you're a punk. He's a punk. You know, you so, can't even laugh naturally. That, 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 yeah. But I wouldn't <laughs> ever wait to hear a new thing that Donald Trump is going to call Ron DeSantis. I just yeah, do. Yeah. He's, he really does well, know how to lay him out. 
You know, Joy Reid pointed out the other day too, she's like, DeSantis is gross. Don't ever shake his hand eating pudding with three fingers and then showed a video of him wiping his nose with his hand and going to shake somebody else. He's he's gross. He's unlikable. I mean, he is so unlikable. That fake laugh. I put that, that on the loop. Oh. <laughs> oh God, it was so bad. I put that on the loop because it's I like, it was you like, are it was obviously a thick nightmare. And, Oh right. my God, I thought and, it was from American Horror Story after a while. I was right. like, oh. Right, and the the um, the um behind the scenes things coming out from his campaign, that's the other thing, his campaign leaks too much. That's gonna be a problem for him. But is that they are trying to make him likable. Like he's not a person. He's yeah, not I mean, a personable person. And, and, but, and the truth be told, people can see fake. You got to hold, pres, look, presidential candidates got to go hold babies. This is why Trump never held any babies, because a baby can sense that a person is crooked and evil and will start crying. Everybody wants to know, why did Barack Obama, why was he able to charm babies, stop babies? From, because he's a likable person. DeSantis goes to hold somebody's baby, that baby's going to scream its head off and tell the truth. But Florida, Florida on one level, it is really true. I see Cinema and Canela said that it was a cheap state. More than 80% of the inhabitants live paycheck to paycheck. It is really true. There's one section called Imperial or some area where African-Americans live. And it's really, really rough. And it's really, 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 really poor. Then you have Miami. And then you have the Art Basel thing and all the really hoity-toity. It goes on and everybody's pretending that it's so fabulous. But to be honest with you, everything you do in Florida is to hide something. You're hiding either who you are, what you did, where you're going, where you came from. Um, old corporate executives usually go to Naples and retire <clears throat> and keep their you know stuff uh, hidden. It's just that kind of a place. So the loyalties there are from people who never live there. It's a it's a place where where a lot of people, not only immigrants, but people in the nation, go there who never did anything for it in their youth or created communities and families. It's very transient, is what I'm saying. So what happens is, you don't have people who give about kids in school. You do have these pockets of communities, but the vast majority of people who have put money into the country are people who came from the outside. There's no original Floridians there. You've got the Russians who anchor babied there. You've got all sorts of crap that's been going on. And that's why it is so, you know, once you step out of Fort Lauderdale or Miami, you know, you're in trouble. I'm sorry. Okay. Naples, mm, I don't know. It depends on what color your skin is. Okay. But we've got to really sound the alarm. Just one last thing. We've got to really, really continue to sound the alarm about Ron DeSantis because here's the difference. Trump is dangerous, no doubt. Ron DeSantis is more, I will say, is more dangerous than Trump. But he's more dangerous because he legislates things. OK, Trump doesn't care about legislating, about doing anything. He, he cares about getting people to like him and being popular, et cetera, et cetera. So um, and also, too, Trump is a loser. He loses elections. He wins them for de Democrats. So he's he's the smaller threat of the two. DeSantis is a bigger threat because every last piece of legislation he has put, put this way, every last piece of legislation he has put in Florida in place, particularly since 2020 to now, is for his run for presidency. Everything he's doing and he's done since 2020 is what he plans to do on a larger scale. That's why when these bills were being discussed, he was in Iowa, he was in New Hampshire, he was in South Carolina. He was in the early states talking it up and then going at night and signing them into law. So let's be very clear. He is the threat, Yeah, period. but the problem is that he doesn't have, he rules by fear. And so as far as I can see, his state Senate his state house Congress, they are frozen. They are afraid of him. They do nothing. And, and, all the and, and the punishment that they get, it's swift, fast, in a hurry. He punishes. The, He's very- He does. But the challenge on the national level is that we have Marjorie Taylor Greene, Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, people who think like him, who do not have to be, who do not have to have the fear of God put into them to vote for what 
for these things because guess what? They want them to. They're trying to do it now and they can't do it because they need a president who will make sure that these things happen. And 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 keep in mind too, like like he's doing in Florida, he is rounding up people, particularly people of color, poor people, voters. He's rounding them up and having them arrested so that they get charged for voting money charges so they can't vote this next election. He'll do that on the national level. Okay, well, I think we may have we may have yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on, Aisha. We lost you for a little bit there, but I think we've got you back reception-wise. So we're going to move on to the next conversation topic. But before we do that, going to shut it down on IG Life. Uh, thank you, DJ, D, Dr. LJ Speaks, yeah. Straight Rum, Mr. Gospel Cafe, Van Slinger, the Emily Goddess. Thank you so much for joining the conversation, I, IG Live. If you want to catch the full conversation live on the replay, go replay go to the Dr. Vibe show on YouTube and also subscribe and hit the notification button. So that's it, IG Live. Thanks again. All right. So uh, I just want to shout out and I hope she gets the email, but Cinnamon Canella, I got your email and I'm trying to send something back to you. So hopefully before the end of this conversation today, you'll be a part of the group. It bounced back and it's something on my end, but no problem. And Cinema says... Yeah, sadly, DeSantis has a lot of support from small business owners. So we'll leave it at that. Let's move on to our next conversation piece. We have Texas House launches historic impeachment proceedings against AG Ken Paxton. Jill, you wanted to bring this one up, so it's yours. Go for it. Well, basically, even I don't, I'm bringing it up because I don't even know what was going on in Texas. It's like, except, you know, today they all brought their torches and their tiki torches and their hoods and they went after one of their own. I don't know. Does he have a black girlfriend or something? Like <laughs> they had to get rid of him. Did he get married to, you know, interracial marriage or what did this man do? Except that, that, that all of a sudden he's been doing since 2015 that now today they're like, we're impeaching you. Um, so I, I'm still torn. I don't really know. I know that uh, there's about 10 different charges that they want, had for him. And um, yeah, he's finished. They got rid of him. I'm wondering why we never got to do that with uh, you know who. Um, okay. So Aisha, do you know anything about the story? If not, I can put the story up on the screen. If you want, we can read through it in real time. Basically, the articles of impeachment against Texas AG Ken Paxton, seven counts of disregard of official duty, three counts of false statements in official records, two counts of misapplication of public resources, two counts of constitutional bribery, uh, two counts obstruction of justice, one count conspiracy or attempted conspiracy, one count of dereliction of duty, one count of unfitness for office, and one count of something else that I don't know that I cut off. So basically, Mr. Paxton has uh, offended many of his people that, and they want him gone. Um, and that is the, is that the Democratic senators um, or Congress that came for him? I don't know. No. But I, I, I've, I've it was, seen. It was, no, it was his own party. Yes, his own party. So aren't there other. Yeah. So hold on a second. How come. What happened asking, was he apparently was making calls. Go ahead, Aisha. You're on delay. Go ahead. Because he was making calls to them and sending emails to them individually, telling them that they had stuff on him, and well, that, that he had stuff on them. Okay. Well, I find it interesting. Well, we know there were whistleblowers, and then there was the bribery aspect of it. So, um, so basically, uh, federally, they began looking into the allegations that Texas uh, AG, uh, 
I don't know. It's this is a really award-winning kind of thing that they say is going to happen. What's going to come out about him? I don't know. But, I mean, but, at I, the end of the day, it was just a story that I heard. I don't really care anymore. It's like a little too late for me. I really don't give a f what the Republicans are doing. I, I I can't I can't take them. What now? They're hanging one of their own. You know, it, it's like it doesn't matter. And trying to be so pious, like they give it. Uh, why? Because he did. I don't understand it anymore. I don't. Texas is a fool. <laughs> now, didn't your daughter used to live in Texas? Mm -hmm. Why'd she leave? Uh, because I was definitely on that. <laughs> like, this is the worst place you could ever live. You might as well go to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you have no rights as a woman. And don't people don't come for me about well the women can do yeah you can go and pretend to host a museum and we're so open and free and we're not going to talk about that no okay okay no, we are not you know what I'm saying so yeah for me Texas great food great restaurants there are some really great people there but the people in charge are frightening us. And somebody's voting for them. I don't know if the jackals come out at night on voting election day and decide to inhabit a bunch of people's bodies and go and vote, but it's really bad. It's just way overdue. How they all did with Uvalde, I don't really care anymore about, you know, it's like they don't want change. They don't want to change. They want to change it back. You know, and the only way we're going to, this is what I, the only way anybody's going to change anything, this isn't a time machine, you rednecks, you like racists. It's not a time machine. We ain't going back. Aisha, how is your audio? Okay. Aisha is frozen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove her from the thing at the moment that's been a crazy day today in and out, well, in and yeah, out. it was going so but, good and then she's frozen know, so but you know what the show goes on not it must go on you're frozen <laughs> when da, 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 da. Was, wasn't there also a song must let the show go on who did show that? must go on who, yeah well that's, that's mercury that's show what there, there was an old, but there was an older song um, this masquerade, da, 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 I'm so blind, I'm so blind, must let the show go on. You know what? I've got a... Like a I circus a, song? Yeah, well, I got a... Must let, I got it. Okay, I got... Sorry, we're doing this live, but it just in my... Three Dog Night did a song called The Show Must Go On. Thank you. Oh, they, yes, they did have a song called The Show okay. Must Go On, but nothing compares with Freddie Mercury's The Show Must Go On. Very true. Very true. So, family, uh, state of things with Aisha, Jill, and Lala. We have right now just Jill. Aisha's having technical <laughs> challenges, and we are going to move on to another. So, ah. I'm hearing that Kevin McCarthy said, you know, uh, that. You know, they, they're writing more paperwork and coming to an agreement. He's going to reach out to the White House tomorrow and see after they write all this document that um, that they can yeah. settle on. He said there's no taxes raised. There's no, um, you know, so like they said, it is tentative. It's just a holdover yeah. to, until like the next day because there's two people he uh, thanked in his speech who are writing the actual text okay. so we will not know until tomorrow which aisha had said we will not know until they look at what the republicans finally want because they're not telling everybody what they want they dropped the bomb talk about you dropped a bomb on me and <laughs> they're gonna drop it tomorrow on biden and then he'll get to reply so it could either be on like donkey Kong or off you know all right you let's know. move to our next conversation piece Florida school restricts access to Amanda Gorman's inauguration. Program. Very sad. Very, very sad. <laughs> because of one mother who's a proud, who's a member of the Proud Boys, essentially. Wow. So we There are 11 parents that they have identified so far that are responsible for all of these book 
burnings, book bannings. I say burnings because essentially it's been burned into the ethos of these degenerate minds that these are bad books and they're not. Um, and now they try to play it off. This is what DeSantis, why he's a problem. He's like, there's no book bannings. He's trying to say that they've been breaking them down into categories. Um, it's sort of like the abortion law where, where now these states are getting sued because they make it so vague where you're not sure what the actual law is um, that they just did these people who are working in these jobs, a $15 an hour job, or maybe seven, if you live in Florida, uh, who the hell is going to risk their life bringing in um, a book, uh, Dr. Seuss, that's been banned. Who's going to do it? And then they go, Oh, but you can have that for seven year olds, but not for 10 year olds and 10 year olds can't read this. That's how they're playing games with people. So because they keep, Anytime you see confusion, by the way, it's always a sign of the devil. Just know that. I've always known that from a young child. Anytime there's confusion, the devil is somewhere here, you know, and that's what the Republicans do. That's how I know who they are, because they create uh, double talk and start talking like, you know, like things you don't even understand what they're saying. Tower of Babel. Those were very significant. If they read their own stupid Bibles, which they don't, I call it stupid because they make it stupid. They have made, they have made God um, not very intelligent. And it really is crazy. It's crazy. They see God in their own reflection. And if he is, then his name is Elmer and he's got straw hanging out of his mouth. And he, uh, <laughs> how y'all doing? I don't know. Y'all got to get over there and over there because you leave. That's their God. Um, but well, it's not my it, it's interesting, you know, and let me just, I'm just going to build, bring up the story in just a moment because I didn't know this part of the story. But uh, I'm just putting it up here. Okay, let's put it up here. So there, here, here. Just give me a moment. I didn't know this twist to this story. Uh, let me see. Let me do this. Okay. So now I'm hearing or reading, just as we're live right now, that the Florida mother behind ban on yeah. Amanda Gorman's porn has Proud Boy links. Yes. Social media and post picture Dolly Solanas as, at, yeah, at Proud Boy events and show posted anti Semitic content online. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. One but, raggedy mother, one raggedy woman was able to pull this off. So, who's was she sucking? Is what I want to know to have taken it that far up. The secondly, I mean, th this is some weirdness going on because uh, their hatred for Oprah Winfrey, for people that I adore, and you know, all I know is that these people are dangerous. Their hate is is beyond. Like they don't want our black people to live. Our celebrities, our people who have contributed so much to our community, they have spent an exorbitant amount of time tearing them down. And so now they go after Amanda Gorman. Let their kids be stupid. I don't give a Let them. They'll be easier to identify in a lineup. They'll, your kids will be easier to identify um, if they're any use after artificial intelligence kicks in. Because your kids will be the stupid ones sitting in the corner that won't know. So, yeah, let your kids be dumb. Let your kids like, oh, they don't think their kids are looking at porn. Oh, really? Uh, look at all the games. When you go out and Christmas shopping, look at what these parents buy their kids. The video mm -hmm. games alone. Do they not sit with them? They can miss me with their because they're full of. Ain't nobody checking for, you know, oh, give them guns. Isn't that what they do, too? These are people that, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You should never trust people who can't make macaroni and cheese. Okay. I think we've got hi, hi, Aisha back just in time because we didn't want to start talking about mac and cheese. So we're talking about the Florida school restricts access to Amanda Gorman's inauguration poem. So I know you want to have some thoughts on this. Yeah, um, it, it's very upsetting to me that people are banning books. Um, I, I I think when, when we get to this point where we're like, no, you can't have access to these books, period, um, because we don't like them. And people who are 
one parent should not be able to say that children across an entire school district should not have access to books that they have never even read, one, two, because they're worried their kids' feelings will get hurt. Here's the thing, nine times out of 10, your kid's not gonna read that book, okay? Because kids who read have parents who read. And parents who read know what's in these books and are okay with it. These are parents who really, it's like- Discuss things with their kids and yeah. You don't. You don't want. You don't want your kids to read about black people. You don't want your kids to read about Native American people. You don't want your kids to read about gay people. You don't want your kids to read Call of the Wild about wolves. <laughs> you don't want your kids to read. You know what was? Oh, what was it? The uh, the little underpants kid, which is a children's book series, because he he pretends he's a, a superhero in a cape and his underwear. Right. I, I mean, where does this stop? Where well, they're this... perverted if they're looking at a cartoon like that. I think people they're who not even they're not even thinking like that are perverts because I would but... be like, who's thinking of that? They're weird. They're really creepy people. They're just creeps, guys. Creeps. Creeps. But it's I not even, even it's... offer them a, like spit if they were on fire. But it's not even just that they're they're that they're creepy people. They're doing it because they can. Remember, the Republicans targeted these people who are functionally illiterate to begin with to run for school board positions or sure. to influence education. And I'm sorry, when Billy Bo ja, Billy Bob Joe or whatever his name is, um, who can't even read the scripture of the Bible, decides he's going to tell three, you know, third graders, eight year old kids what they can and cannot read. We have a problem when you don't want books, you don't want books about they banned a book about an interracial relationship. They banned a book about a minority child, um, um, um excuse me, uh biracial child's experiences. These things happen. They exist in the world. And the more you try to close your kids off from that, the more they're going to go and seek it out. Guess what? You ban the book, it gets put on the news, it gets put in the newspaper, it gets put on social media, it gets put all over the place. And guess what happens? Your kid goes to find the book. And guess what? The book, the Brooklyn Public Library, because of all these things that are being banned, have oh, now yeah. offered a free at large um they did uh, a exactly. countrywide book library card for all kids who can get the books that they want digitally. Right. Period. Period. So yeah. you're not going to be, able, you can't stop it. You can't yeah. stop it any more than Tipper Gore could stop Prince from making music. Come on, exactly. let's, let's, let's be, let's be real about this. Sure. And this is something that for me was very bothersome because now you banned an inaugural speech by a pres for a president yeah. that you did because you, and let's be clear, it's not because of what she said about, uh, it's not because of anything she said. It's because you do not believe that he is a legitimately elected president. And so that got me started. It really did. And I have, I'm working on a website to actually um, review banned books, period. And, but the mm -hmm. thing is, is that to do it in context, what they say, why they say they're banning it, and then tell you why they're really banning right. those books. Right. Like I said, I think that it, all we can do is, you know, black uh, people in our own community, um, we we will just start bringing these books and finding book clubs and reaching out and doing things online with different kids. And if their kids aren't included, you know, there's nothing worse than poor little left out kids who aren't going to be invited to the, you know, party, which is like dresses your favorite character from this book. Um, those kind of things really can make a dent uh, when their kid shows up, not the character. So what are they going to do? Tell everybody how to have a birthday party. But there's ways to make it where people feel it. They feel like, oh, we're the outsider because you are yeah. an outsider. There's no reason why kids, white, red, brown, green, whatever they are, should have access to books to read. It's bad enough we have we can't we have to um, compete with this thing. How wonderful! So they're going to take that away from their illiterate children. So what? They get a gun and go shoot up everything because they feel like you know they can't be a part of something or somebody owes them something. These are such bad parents. They're just 
bad. They're yeah. from like an era of days gone by, you know, with like Huck Finn and, you know, Hillbilly <laughs> Hamlet. I don't know. It's just like, it's really, really bad. And, you know, even the Beverly Hillbillies were more progressive than these people. All right. Well, I can tell you this, though. The first book that I'm going to review is a it's it's not a banned book, but it's a book called Ban This Book. And it's about a nine year old little black girl who goes to the library and finds that her favorite book, which is actually being banned currently, uh, is banned. And, and there's a list of books. These are all books that we know that are being banned. And so she goes she she tries to fight her local library to get these books unbanned. Well, the one person we can talk to is Christy White because she's written her series um, with the native um, with the native child and 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 which would be banned in Florida. And right. And so it's really important to see what she's been going through when she's trying to get this book, which is, you know, there was one part in the book about um, his really long braids, which represent his cultural identity. Um, those kind of things, it would be banned in Florida for sure, or in Texas. They, they want to obliterate us, but you know, it's, um, yeah, she's banned. She just said she's banned. So this is really wrong. The, uh, considering her ancestors have been in North America okay. long before these folks ever were even thought of. All right. So let me get to some comments. Uh, Owen back here. Black Beauty says, OMG, Florida reminds you of an episode of the Gremlins. <laughs> um, <laughs> Regina says, quote of the day, you should never trust anyone who can't make macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Uh, Tila says potato salad too. Hey y'all, haven't seen a while. Tila, hey, uh, Christy says, don't even get me started on banned books. Uh, Cinema Canella says, I had an interesting response this week from a lady. She told me she was okay with biracial marriage, but just don't put it on her face on her face all the time. Same with transgender issues. Ooh, what did she say to her back? What? Wait, how did you do? Uh, and, and then. Uh, How about you just go in your house and lock your door and never come out? And Cinema says, don't know what to say or make out of that comment. All right. Ooh, so don't let's talk move to her ever again. But be careful. You know, these people, you know, we, in a way, they're such rats, too. They're the people that should these people, they, they would have ratted on you to like the Gestapo or something. So there's this other thing, like somebody has a book out and I, I want to get it. I was, it's on my list somewhere. When you start censoring yourself, like about what to say, who to say it or, or, or whatever, that's the beginning of authoritarianism because all of these moves that are happening right now are to get us to the point where we start going, I'm just not going to say anything, or I'm just going to like sit here and mind my own business, or I'm not going to go outside. What happened, that, that's the part of the erosion of your society. And when you start to see that, then you should really prick your ears up because that means your society is in decline and, and it tur it's turned into a banana republic because that's what they want. All these big moves are now at the point where people are standing out and now they're weaponized. So we find ourselves not saying anything or getting up and leaving when there's some kind of for fuffle going, you go, I'm leaving, I'm getting out of here. And that's mm -hmm. how authoritarianism breeds. And it starts to do its own work just based upon that. And then you have even more vocal people who within that silence of your silence of not responding, the sad fact is it gets bigger and bigger. And then they just don't want you around, period. No matter what, there's nothing you can, you can't really, you ultimately will have a standoff. Okay. Well, you know, it, it just one last one last. Comment, Aisha. It's much simpler than that. Even the lady, I don't mind if biracial marriage is so good. In my, you know, you think that people care about you. That, that that's the thing. She thinks that's that true too. Care. Anybody come to see you, Otis? That's all. That's the only way. It's like I nobody know. cares about you. It's true. Get back in your cage, old lady. You know, right. that's the like they deliberately came out their house to put it in your right. face. In your and and face. that's with all and that's with all these issues. These even with these books, these books aren't things being put in your face. You have to actually literally go and find a book. It's like these people going to Target just 
for the sole fact of finding shirts with rainbows and jumping on them and recording them when they know they don't shop at Target, they shop at Walmart. But American white men have a really bad reputation and bad problems right now. Really, the question is, what's happening to white men? It's their year now. Last year, and it's the women too. There's something really bad going on with the youth, the young uh, millennials and Zs. Okay, all right. I want, we're gonna we're gonna Maybe go on to our last con facts. conversation topic. Uh, and as, as Christy said, she said exactly. I'm banned. Uh, she says she's she's coming on to talk about this soon. Yes, I hope so. The better, and. Yeah. And she says here they call it polite Canadian. So she'll give a, yeah. a view from north of the border. Yes. All right. Last conversation topic. And the death of Tina Turner. Mm, very sad. Yeah. Yeah. I like I, 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 liked, I, I, I love Tina Turner, especially when, when the movie came out and Angela Bassett played her. I couldn't wait. I was, you know, what? 19, 20 at the time. I couldn't wait for it to come out. I went and I read her um her memoir and now I was I was waiting. I was like, I didn't want to see the documentary that came out in 2021 because I read an interview with her about it and she knew she was dying at that point. She knew her cancer was terminal. And so she said, This is the last thing I'm doing. And so I was kind of like, Yeah, if I don't watch it, then you know, you know, make time, you know. Than the time, but did I she have really cancer, like or I thought it was something with her kidneys? She she had something with her kidneys, but your kidneys can shut down with cancer. Um, but I she had her husband like, donated his kidney yeah. in 2017. But she had intestinal cancer, and that was something that came out too when her son committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, none of her, her son committed suicide two years yeah. about two years ago. Yeah, well. What I will say about Ms. Turner, she and her other son died from colon cancer six months ago. Right. Definitely, yeah. she lived a very full life. She did. She was a remarkable lady. Um, yeah. Remarkable, and I mean, if you haven't heard her um, album, she did with her CD or whatever you're, they're calling it these days, her project with these other two women. It's a, on mantras. And because she was a devout Buddhist, which I totally love and adore. Um, and she, uh, it's amazing to hear her chanting and her, uh, just this production is so beautiful. And there's a bunch of little children in this one, Sarvechan. Um, yeah, I, I just can't get over it enough. I think that knowing that she was a Buddhist and how, what her belief system was, um, I look up at a cloud and I, I can see Tina Turner. Like that's the mm -hmm. concept. There's a cloud in my tea because from the cloud mm -hmm. comes the rain, the condensation, and then the water that we're drinking. This, all of it is, is her, all of it is us. So I really buy into this. I believe this. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, for me, I just thought she was remarkable and she definitely was destined for, you know, just as a role model for all of us, for the resilience to keep going. Cause she was 44 when she made that comeback, like we're in her forties. Yeah. So, you know, it was unheard of at that time, but she's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. You made me have a real Gen X moment right there when you mentioned her being <laughs> Buddhist, because I remember in the nineties after the movie came out, everybody's nom yo ho renge kyo, because that was the line in the movie yeah. and the, the chanting, the chanting. Yeah. And, yeah. and it saved yeah. her life. She said it always saved her Yeah, um, even before. So she, after the whole Ike thing, she had that she was in Vegas and she was doing, you know, the, Buddhism with her uh, Gohansa and all of this stuff. And it did lead her to where Roger Davies uh, saw her, found her. Um, I, Roger had managed me at one point. Um, so they were just symbiotic, like him coming into her life and making that happen again for her was destiny. I kid you not. I just thought it was always just super blessed, always blessed. There was just like everything around it. She deserved it. It was like the 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 gods, the universe's blessings were just 
pouring on her because they knew she was the right person for the job. Right. And she's a reminder that women, life does not end at 40. Right. It, there you it go. It can be great after. Yeah. So Tila says, Tina did it all in her foreign stilettos and looked like she mm -hmm. had the best time of her life in her performances. Oh, yeah. A true artist, RIP. Regina says, we'll remember her forever. My sister and her boyfriend saw Tina at the Ritz in New York City, 1981. They yeah. were blown away. Of course. All yeah. right. Well, another icon gone, and hopefully we'll never forget. That's so. hard. You know, it's really getting harder and harder because, you know, we're not, you know, I'm not a spring chicken and I have my issues of things. I think we all do when we, when we know that, you know, tomorrow isn't promised. It's really just tough because I don't know if you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing. Like they don't have these kind of satellites and moonbeams and stars that we had from our generation. Th this crop that's out there, you're not to slag them down, but they are, they're repeat generations. Like today I was looking at Timothy Chalamet and I no noticing idea he, he's just Either. a doctor, but he's just the duplicate of Judd, Her of Judd Nelson from St. Okay. Elmo's Fire. He's okay. that, it's like, there's always a, there's somebody and then there's another one that slides in. It's like all of a sudden we're in this weird thing where nothing is changing as much as they're going, oh, another Cindy Crawford. Oh, looks just like them. Oh, another. Can we do another so and so? They're not people's minds are a lot more closed because there's so little innovation coming from the creative sides other than, you know, people trying to mess around like their starships in space and like, you know, like I, they're aliens. And that I call them the replacement until a real alien comes here and makes some music, which we do need. We need I call them the replacements though. It's kind of like a prince replacing vanity with Apollonia. It's like you just find someone else who can fit the mold and there you go. Yeah, we're and they're doing it with music. Space. These are iconic people. When you see yeah. like, you know, I was looking at Rod Stewart the other day, and then uh, Ron Wood, and all these guys because he had a show here, and I saw on the Instagram, and I was like, wow, you know, these guys are like Tina's peers. They're all, all of them, same mm -hmm. age, seventies, eighties. Yeah. So mm -hmm. once this goes. I yeah. don't think there will ever be these kind of cars that pass us. Oh, As okay. Prince said, they don't make cars like this that pass you like so, this every day. So Christy White says, no, they sure don't. And Regina says, clones, um, not originals. And yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Maybe what you're saying, Jill, it, maybe part of it, what you're saying, it goes back to an old song by The Who. It's only teenage wasteland. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> or, or like what Martin, AI, what Martin Luther King AI said about longevity. Longevity has its place. Yeah. But AI is going to dust off people, and it's not going to allow. Um, oh, yeah. Not only you can duplicate music and you can make this stuff, but it's lacking that whole rebellion and the everything that was coming with it's that. Lacking a, it's lacking a voice. It's lacking yeah. heart and it's lacking a movement. A yes, yeah. there you go. That's there you it. Go. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, on that, we are done, family. Another epic conversation. Hey, this has been another, another great one. How do you ladies just keep so consistent? <laughs> Agro, just being aggravated all the time. <laughs> information is what is the key to this is that we seek information and that's what they don't want when they ban books okay. yeah well it's true right. i mean books and lyrics and words they're they're just fabulous you know and we're just all losing right. so much okay well let's uh and DJ People are becoming White. very anti-social guys. They're, DJ, they're like DJ social White, DJ White says creativity too. They don't make them like they used to. Agreed. No. Jen says, as always, great conversation. So before we let the ladies go, we'll like them to share their contact information. So 
Uh, first things first, I think Jill's still on Twitter. I'm but still on Twitter Jill. at Jill D. Jones. Um, I don't know how, what Discord. I know I'm on it, but I don't know what the handle is. No, so it's all right. It's okay. Well, we'll, we'll get that. You can put that on the next time. Yeah, let's get the groups first going, and then we can do the rest. So there she is on Twitter and on Instagram. As always, thank you so much, Jill D. Jones. And then Aisha Staggers. Well, I have Twitter there, but you're not on Twitter anymore, so... Well, if you want to reach me on Twitter, you can DM me and I can give you other ways to contact me. There we go. But, but primarily Instagram at AK Staggers. Wonderful. Fantastic. And if you want to touch base with me, you can do that through these means. A website, the dr v i b e s h o w dot com. Email dr period v i b e at the dr v i b e s h o w dot com. YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, the Dr. Vibe Show. Twitter, at D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W and Instagram at the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. If you want to catch replays of this epic conversation, you can catch them on the Dr. Vibe show on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and then the Dr. Vibe show website. And as I said earlier on, we are encouraging you to do this. First of all, would you like to join the State of Things Discord group? That's our private chat group for the community because we're on once a week, but there's so much stuff going on in between. Would you like to have conversations with Jill, Aisha, and Lala between conversations via, via chat? Go to the doctor. Well, email me at dr. Period, v i b e at the dr. v i b e s h o w dot com. Cinnamon Canella, I've sent out your invitation. So Join right quick. Anybody else looking for it and tell me who you are because we're not letting any mm, people into our group. All right. So that's another thing. Also, please like the Dr. Vibe show on YouTube and hit the notification button. If you're doing it on YouTube, you get notified and like the Dr. Vibe show on Facebook and LinkedIn. So this is how we're going to close out. Uh, actually, one other thing. Would you like to promote your business or service on our show? Contact me at my email address. Done. So this is how we're going to clo close out. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger. Block assumption. I just heard it. If you heard that sound there, that means someone has joined the room. Thank you so much. Okay. This is what we like in real time. Sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger. Block assumptions, they aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Remember to give yourselves grace and don't just manage your time, manage your energy. If you're watching this during this week on the 27th, happy Memorial Day to Americans around the world. All right? So God bless. Peace, well, keep the faith, and walk good. We'll see you next week. Bye. Or end in the Discord room.